Hey guys, what's going on? It's Josh from In Effect Hardcore here. I'm hanging out with Sonny Singh from Hate56.com. If you watch any of your favorite bands online, you've probably seen his work. i uh, just going to sit down and talk to him for a little bit, try to figure out why he does what he does. Uh, so my first question is, where did it all start for you? Uh, like, what was the first show that you went to, and did you go of your own accord with a camera, or were you asked to film specifically? It's a good question. Um, I really don't remember the first show I went to. I remember it was actually 1999. The first big concert I went to was the Rough Riders Cash Money Millionaire Tour in Philadelphia. Got to see DMX, Juvenile, the whole cruise and everything. Obviously, I didn't film that, but that was like the first big show I went to. Um, but I had started going to like local pop punk scott indie hardcore shows in south jersey um early 2000s 2001 when i was just starting high school um and i didn't really start filming until around 2000 actually around the same time 2001 2002 uh, a couple of friends of mine and i we started a mini like production company we wanted to start booking bands and booking shows and learning all the ins and outs um we were young we called ourselves punks haven so we there was one guy who was in charge of like learning how to do sound some guy was in charge of learning how to like you know do all the management stuff with the bands, interacting with the bands. And I really wanted to learn more about video because at that point I had never used a video camera. So uh, that was my first um, entrance into filming bands was just, that was like my contribution to this like group was just to be attend the shows and just film it. Um, and so, like I said, that was around early 2000s and up until like 2003, 2004. And I kind of stopped after that for a little bit. Okay. Uh, that said, what was the, what was the spark for you? Um, I know you've labeled yourself as kind of like obsessive, with collecting hardcore uh, media. So what was what was the genesis, I guess, of Hate Five Six as a venue for you to record and put shows out on the regular? Like where did that that where did that interest come from? Yeah, so I really started to appreciate live video because I was in high school, like when I was starting to get into punk rock and hardcore, I was starting to get really involved with collecting bootleg VHS tapes of bands that I liked. And so that was how I really started to appreciate a live video, you know. Um, and so, like I said, I stopped filming after around 2003, 2004, because by that point, YouTube didn't exist. So there's really no way for me to share these videos of these bands that no, no one would even give a fuck about in South Jersey, you know? Right. So I'd stopped for a few years. And then uh, 2008, I picked up what was like my first legit camera. It's a Canon GL2. Uh, for anyone who's like a skateboard nerd, like that's what the everyone used to use to film skateboarding videos. Um, so I remember filming like the Floor Punch Reunion in fall of 07. And then I... That's how I first started getting back into it. But it really wasn't until um, the Burning Fight Fest in Chicago in 2009, where at the last minute I got the thumbs up to film it. And they had they had a, had a bunch of bands play for the first time in 10 plus years, like Unbroken, Trial, 108, Disembodied. They all reunited to play this like 90s um, you know, centered fest. And so um, after I filmed that and then you know I started putting stuff online, that's when I noticed like a huge spike in like interest. So that was like, you know, it was basically, it started out with collecting videos on VH, VHS tapes and then like getting that opportunity to film like this big fest. And that's, it's kind of just snowballed from there. How is it that you chose to go with the medium of music over like BMX or skateboarding or something like that? Cause I know you're involved in that, you know, in that scene as well. What, what made you pick music over riding? Yeah. I mean, I still, I still ride BMX and I still do BMX videos every now and then. So anyone who go, actually goes on Hate 6 there is a BMX category. We will, you'll see a couple of videos and every now and then I'll put a new one up. But, um, I really think it came down to just how I discussed I mean, when I first started filming shows, I was also starting to film me riding and my friends riding too. But, um, there was something just seemed a little bit more organic and natural about filming a show. Cause I was already going to these shows and I wanted to participate in some way. So for me, filming these shows was a way of contributing back to this community by like capturing what was there. And with the, I mean, when I first started, I had no idea how I was going to disseminate any of it. Like I said, YouTube didn't exist. And I had these dreams of like, oh, I'll make DVDs and sell them. But like, I was like 15. And back then, no one would buy a band, buy a DVD of a fucking ska band from South Jersey. And no one ever heard about, you know? Um, they, they still don't. They still don't, um, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, so I felt like, at least filming live music gave me a sense of purpose within this uh, scene that I really liked um, being a part of to begin with. Great. Um, once you started filming more on the regular and you came up with the idea to get a logo behind it and hate five, six, which is uh, a play on eight, five, six, the area code in South Jersey that you're from. 
uh, where did the camera and sickle come from? And I know, uh, and how does that tie in, I guess, to your personal ethos and the way that you carry Hate Five Six, I guess, as a brand? And I know you're uh, you're very anti-capitalist. And you distribute everything for free with no copyright. Um, but how did how did this come about? And and you know what does that mean to you? So what most people don't know is when I first started before Hate Five Six, the name was Blazin Asian Productions. I'm straight edge. I've never even actually smoked, but there's something about Blazin Asian. I think it was like a movie reference or something. I, I forget where it came from. And the logo was actually uh, a black and white picture of my face with a ring of fire around it. And so there is in there is a VHS. Gotta bring it back. Yeah, yeah. There is a VHS tape floating around somewhere where I, I filmed a bunch. I filmed this band Lower Marion a lot in South Jersey, and I. I basically put out a VHS tape just for the band and then for friends and had like four of their live sets. And at the end was just a, uh, it was an animated version of that logo. Like my face like blew up, like blew up into the, in the frame and then a ring of fire, like animated around it and like flames animated. And the soundtrack was the this, this shelter song that I really liked. But um, I really grew up with having left wing politics. I mean, I grew up, anyone who knows me or is familiar with this site knows that like I'm a big rage against machine nerd. So like, a lot of my politics and the way I run Hate Five Six is inspired by what Rage did as a band. Basically, like the logo is meant to encapsulate that. So it's not a hammer and sickle; it's a camera. It's actually the Canon GL two, if you look closely. So what it represents is how I want Hate Five Six to exist. It's it's this medium where my contribution back to hardcore is just my passion for filming live music and providing that um, in an equal uh, access fashion for everyone around the world in a in a, in a non commercial medium as anti-capitalist as, as I can make it. So for me, the logo just represents the whole political statement of what Hate 5 6 is. Uh, on, uh, on your site and last time that I talked to you, you referred to yourself as an objective observer when you're filming these shows. And my question uh, to that is, how do you maintain your objectivity when you're on stage and there's that energy? How do, how do you not get involved, I guess? Because I, I have a real problem standing still when I'm at when I'm at a show and I see a band I like, how do you stay there with the camera and and keep it steady? You know, <laughs> um, it's tough. I mean, if you watch me filming, like I'm I'm moving around a lot, and if it's a band that I like, I'll be singing along, fist pumping, or just even like just screaming. And that's why if you watch certain sets, you can see the camera shake a lot more than it usually does, and you can actually hear me screaming on, on some sets. But I think when I talk about being an objective observer, observer, I'm m talking more about like filming bands that I don't agree with politically. Um, Cause I, there, I, there are a lot of types of hardcore bands, right? And some of them are more controversial than others. And for me, I treat what I do as just documenting what's happening. Um, so there's certain bands that will say sexist or racist or homophobic things on stage, whether or not they mean it is debatable, but they use language that is indicative of, you know, that sort of viewpoint. And so people are always like, why do you film that band? Well, maybe you shouldn't post that. Maybe you should make a statement and not do it. But for me, I feel like it's important for me to be consistent and be objective. And I would rather film one of these quote, problematic bands and put that footage out there so people can then have a good discussion saying, you know what, that's fucked up what they said. And I'd rather create a space where that conversation can happen than erase a band from history. Cause that's also kind of fucked up, you know, being, I, at the end of the day, I don't want to be a revisionist with anything that I do. I'd rather just document, here's what happened, throw it out there and let people process it in however they, however they, you know, can. Okay. Are there any of those bands that you don't necessarily like or, or even bands that you just don't listen to on a regular basis, but that you love filming them? Yeah, I mean, so... You don't have to name names. That's fine. But yeah, So it's actually interesting. Actually, anyone who is really good friends with me will know that um, I almost only listen to live music at this point. Like, most of the stuff I film, I've never even heard recorded. Um, it was only recently that I, like finally listen to Incendiary's record. And I love filming Incendiary. I love fucking filming. Like I love their live set. Everything is just incredible. And so for me, I feel like having done Hate Five Six for so long, maybe this is gonna sound like pretentious or whatever, but I feel like I've developed like a really um, deep appreciation for live music or just like, cause I feel like a band's live existence is what their existence is. You know, a record can only capture so much, but it's the live set that shows how they actually performed it, how people interact with it at a certain place in time. And so for me, I feel as though um, I connect with the band more if I'm just experiencing it live. So I actually won't listen to a band. So if I'm filming a band for the first time, I won't listen to them on Bandcamp or a record. I want my first introduction to the band to be their live set. And so, um, yeah, I mean, 
there's definitely a lot of bands that I film that I don't like, but I film it because they get great reactions or, um, you know, I just want to be, you know, like I said, objective in, in what I'm documenting. So. So when you're on stage filming some of these bands, whether it's a band you've filmed before or a band that you're filming for the first time, are there certain cues that, that you're kind of privy to now with the experience you've had where you know that, okay, I'm, I'm going to take the shot and kind of like pan to the drummer, pan here and focus on this, you know, and in that, are you thinking ahead to the edit, editing process while you're on stage or is that not even there and you're just, you know, on stage and I'll deal with editing later? Yeah, I mean, with a band like Mindset, that they're like the band that I've filmed the most, like 30 plus times so far over the years. Um, I've definitely learned like what parts transition well with them, like whether it's like a drum fill that D Fang is doing, and then I know that it's going to transition to like Evan screaming or you know Mike or Austin stage diving. I know like exactly when to like. I, if you, anyone who watches like Hate Five Six video knows that like I'm not standing still. The shot is never static. There's a lot of like fast motion like pans, like a whip pan is what they call it. So I definitely time a lot of my movements to how the band is like playing, whether it's like a drum fill or if I know that like, you know, if the if the song opens up with like the guitar doing a, like a solo of some kind, I'll like to get a tight shot of him, you know, on the frets and on the strings. And then I'll quickly, as the song crashes in, I'll like whip pan out or do a combination of a whip and zoom out. And for me, it's just, a, it's a way of changing perspective and making it like a very dynamic shot. So, um, especially if I'm doing like a multi-cam edit, I know that roughly, um, I know when to do these whip pans because I know that like I, I do a lot of transitions where I'm going from a static shot on one side of the stage to like a whip pan on the other. So it's hard to describe, but if you watch like some of these multi-cam sets, it seems like a more fluid transition if I'm moving from a static shot to like one that's whipping as opposed to going from one that's whipping to one that's static. So it just seems like it's a way of quickly moving the viewer's perspective from one part of the venue to the other side of the venue in a very seamless, you know, fashion. So a lot of the decisions, decisions I make are because of, I know that I'm trying to capture a certain, like I'm basically trying to complement the, the change in intensity in the music with how it looks visually, whether or not it's like, getting it during a slow part or soft part, getting a tight shot of just the crowd singing along or getting, getting ready for like the buildup that's happening or getting a shot of the guitars thrashing around on the, on the, on the stage, you know, I'm looking for these salient moments with the video camera and just trying to capture them and kind of use the camera, moving the camera in a way that can then make that transition to the next part of the song, you know, hit harder, you know? So I feel like you're just getting a single shot. You're not feeling it, but if it's, if you're if, if what you're hearing and what you're seeing go hand in hand, it just makes it like a much more engaging video to watch. At least that's how I look at it. I don't know if that's true. I mean, no, I, I think I think it definitely does translate. I mean, I look at, uh, for example, one of my favorite sets that I've watched probably ten times on uh, on your site is the Code Orange set from This Is Hardcore in 2014. You know, and there's a lot of really good editing choices where you go from like the total chaos that was the stage, and then you pull back and you show like everyone just going wild um what are some of some of those sets i guess that stand out to you as like the wildest or the most fun to film them that you experience it you film it and when it's all done you can look at it and go man this is why i do this you know like, why this is why i keep going out and standing there for hours people just holding the camera and bringing you you know your favorite bands you know via this medium yeah i mean i have these so no one's ever actually watched me edit a video. I basically stand at the computer. I have all the camera angles synced up and I'm basically just pressing keys on a keyboard to cut between angle one, angle two, angle three. But like, I'll keep the music loud because I live alone. And I'll basically, when I know that an angle hits, when I know that when I feel like the transition was like on time, because I have to edit it in real time. If the 30, 30 minute or hour long set, I have to, it's going to take me that at least that long to watch through it and cut. But like when a transition hits and I know that like, oh, I got that like perfect transition from a static, static shot to a whip pan or I captured the capture right room. I just start screaming and I start like pounding my fist because that really makes me excited about doing these multi-cam edits and like capturing those moments. Um, yeah, definitely from last year's This Is Hardcore uh, in no particular order was like the incendiary set. I felt like there were some really great transitions there because they have, they have songs they open up with just like the guitar part going really slow and then it starts building up and then the drums smash in. And I have a lot of just like those crazy fast transitions in there and I felt like they worked really well together especially because I had the multi multiple cameras running um, Converge's set from that same year too was also 
one of my favorite edits also because like Kurt mixed it so it just sounds fucking incredible um but you know it happens almost every week where or every other week after I come home from filming a show and I'm watching the footage I'm like this is exactly I captured that moment that I wanted um I'm trying to think of another example um like a recent example of oh, catharsis when they played in Philly um I forget when was that show that was like in uh the fall August yeah but that was just basically in a small loft space in Philly it was after the fest and like I just wanted to film something small and I just had the single camera no soundboard and it was very intimate and I felt like that's a band that just has a lot of intensity like very like powerful moments and I felt like all the shots that I was getting were exactly what I wanted whether it was like a tight shot or just capturing the chaos of people just singing along was like when I got home and watched that I it was, I was i couldn't have been like more happy with that with that with that footage um but anytime i film bane i have that same visceral reaction because the crowd is so fucking loud i feel, I feel like i'm never going to hear a band um have an audience scream those words that loud it's gonna be a long time before that happens again and so uh it definitely happens pretty frequently where i'll capture these moments and they, they remind me exactly why i love doing this